my message today will be titled church is not you it's us and I am super excited to speak about it because I feel like the Lord has given me a special love for the church for the body of Christ and I remember my first time experiencing that love inside of me I just received salvation uh, and I remember there was a call uh, to the front by a pastor and I don't even remember what the call was about but I was there at the front <laughs> and I felt like the Holy Spirit was melting and breaking my heart for the church and for the body of Christ and my my prayer at that altar was God let me never never leave your church and I know exactly what I meant I meant I wanted to be in the physical church and never not like never leaving it but like be committed in the house of God and I felt like this liquid love of the Holy Spirit of Jesus was pouring into my heart specifically for the people and for the church of God and I did not even know that I will be in ministry I didn't know that I will be married to a pastor none of that I just prayed about that and the Lord just placed a special love in my heart and I just pray that you will experience the same that God will instill that love for the church for the people of God into your heart and you will teach that and pass that on to your children as well amen don't leave the church because the church is not perfect how lonely will you feel in a perfect church you know to be healthy as individuals we must be in the community to be healthy as Christians we must be a part of the community of believers God has never created us to be loners to be alone it's our spiritual family you know when uh, we got Sammy when he was born and I'll show a couple of photos when Sammy was born he was born into the family yes he's a separate individual but he was born into the family can you imagine if Sammy was born into the family or any child and the family wasn't there would that child survive I don't think so right because every child that gets born gets born into the family same thing with the spiritual family when you get born again when the Lord encounters you you get born again into the family of Christ into the body of Christ into the church family right God has never wanted humans to be alone not physically not naturally not spiritually Jesus is building the church Matthew 16 18 Jesus loves the church Ephesians 5 25 Jesus died for the church Ephesians 5 25 the church is Jesus's bride the church is the body of Christ Jesus and the church is the family of God church is very essential and Jesus Christ loves his church he is our bridegroom and the church is his bride and you know that church is this beautiful representation of what's gonna happen as a family when we go to heaven just a fun fact about me I am a fifth generation Christian and I'm, I already mentioned that and yes I am bragging about it because it's rare and because it's something that we need to look forward to when we're starting our families when we when you just got saved you becoming a foundation for your future generations for your children for your grandchildren you're becoming that spiritual foundation upon which they will build their lives amen and so I come from a fifth generation Christian my grandma she was a prophetess my mom and dad they pastored the church for the, for a long time until we moved to the United States in 2005 so I was born into Christian family I was born into the ministry family I was I was a PK okay <laughs> pastor's kid and some of you know what that means <laughs> I was I had my crazy days because of that but I've seen a lot of things I've seen people backstabbing each other Christians I've seen betrayal I've seen uh, things that you don't expect to see in the church I've seen offenses but when you know how the sausage is made you usually don't want to eat the sausage right but you know what I realized that I still want the sausage I've seen it all 
I've gone through a lot of my uh, parents struggles seeing them struggling being around people basically will stuff will happen right it doesn't matter if it's in the church or somewhere else so I still love the church and you know we look at the the origin Greek word for the church is ecclesia, which initially refers to a public assembly or gathering in the Christian context it means the congregation or assembly of believers in Christ and we see Matthew 16 18 you are not the church it's not right to say that I am the church we are the church okay that's like saying uh, the table leg table leg is saying I am the table that's not the truth it's just a part of the table same thing with us we are not separately we're members but together we are the church amen look at this table right here if you remove the top and the leg it's parts of the table you can't just call it a table right but when you assemble it together it becomes a functioning table where I can put these beautiful flowers there right same thing with the church when we assemble together we become a functional body of Christ a local church is an assembly if if the church never assembles it's not the church at all you still are a member of Christ's body individually but it's not the church the church is assembly of believers the meeting isn't just something we do it's what church is God has saved us as individuals to be a part of corporate assembly. Same thing when the baby is born, individual human being is born into a family. Same thing with a spiritual family. The body does not consist on, of one part. You do not make up the church in its entirety. It is the togetherness of individual believers that makes up the body of Christ. Amen. You know, sadly to see in our generation and the times that we live in, we see this epidemic of people that refuse to assemble, refuse to go to church, be with the believers of the community, and they say, I am the church. And the thing is, there's two extremes that are, that this idea is focused on. First extreme is extreme need for attention. For that kind of person, healing is needed, right? And the second one is absolutely no need for fellowship and community because you already have it. And, you know, I found myself in number two, that I was so secure in myself that I did not need anyone per se, okay? I didn't need to make new friends. I didn't need fellowship. I, didn't, I already got it. I have a family. I have my sisters. I hang out. Like my cup was full. And then the Holy Spirit started to challenge me and say, you know what? That's not about you. It's still self-focused. Why don't you step out of the, your comfort zone and be a friend to someone else? Because if we don't come together and we don't provide that healing for a needy person who needs that healing who needs to be surrounded by love because many people they have such a dysfunctional families they don't have what I have per se a family and therefore the body of Christ comes together and provides that healing for the person and if you got it all you have the family you are not like super social person you don't care I challenge you today to step out of your comfort zone and actually focus on someone else being that friend to someone else amen you know for that kind of person there is a next level of maturity that needs to take place a maturity of take your eyes off of yourself of being content and actually focus your eyes on other people just like Jesus did you learn to love people Jesus was moved with compassion he was always surrounded by people by his disciples that was his inner circle and he was also the crowds were always around him and he allowed himself to be touched to be spoken to by the crowds Jesus was not really lonely person he was perfect but he allowed that for other people because he was moved with compassion. God loved the world 
so he gave and this is what I'm gonna challenge you let the love of God rule and be in your heart so you can give something that other people maybe don't have and you will be able to serve them in this manner Hebrews 10 25 it says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as it is a manner of some but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching even the word of God is teaching us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together there is power in that worshiping Jesus together is very powerful in Matthew 18 20 it says for where two or three are gathered together in my name I am there in the midst of them just think about it for a second Jesus himself is saying I am in the midst of where you are gathered why wouldn't you want to be there if Jesus is there miracles will be there transformation will be there deliverance will be there community will be there Jesus is there why wouldn't we want to be there amen Paul is instructing churches to do activities that can only be done by meeting together teaching singing psalms hymns and spiritual songs reading the scripture publicly encouraging one another and sharing the Lord's Supper believers were baptized and added to the church to the assembly in Acts 2 41 we see that those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 and all interesting how even the number is there right and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved let me bring some statistics for you as well more frequent church goers had 55 percent reduction in all cause mortality risk compared to non-church goers and that's a study that was done in Vanderbilt University think about that religiously active older adults tend to have lower blood pressure than those who are less active this applies to attendance at religious services and private religious activities but not to religious media think about that physical presence is so much more powerful media can only go so far online presence could be deceiving and very superficial right unfortunately after covid this became so popular that some people began to isolate themselves watching stuff online well praise God for online we're not against that because some people I understand they don't have access to the local church and they have this online opportunity right but that's not the intent of the church we have to assemble together and another thing is that research no a 14 year uh, study shows that regular religious service attendance is associated with 50% lower divorce rate in later life researchers at Duke University Medical Center have shown that people who regularly attend religious services appear to have a healthier immune system than those who don't just think about the benefits and this is just secular research now I want to address something that is it, it, it happens a lot these days and it's a church hurt a lot of people some people they get hurt in the church and they close their heart off and I would like to just talk a little bit about that and then at the end I really want to pray for those people who maybe got hurt like seriously got hurt in the church and I believe the Holy Spirit wants to minister to you he wants to heal that wound so you can be active participant in the body of Christ in the church first of all getting hurt at the church doesn't mean your focus was on people and not on God you can be focused on God and still get hurt that happens usually we're not hurt by the church by but the people in the church we have this expectation and it's 
I feel like it's normal because Christian people should be held to a higher standard because we are growing in Christ. We strive to be perfected into the image of Christ, but we're still human beings. We're still people and the maturity, different people mature at different pace, different people mature and their maturity level at different levels, right? Somebody's just beginning. Somebody's already matured and gone through stuff and forgiven and released and and the expectation of the church is that well you come to church you're supposed to meet all the good people all the positive people the people who how could you how could she even the preachers that fall like how could they and yes like I said we should be held to a higher standard but people are people and they are human beings we have faults and we all grow amen so usually we're not hurt by the church itself by but the but by the people in the church the church is a community of believers who are not all on the same plane with maturity sin and misunderstanding is bound to happen like it's bound to happen because we are human beings but there's also the devil who wants to use the sin of other people to blindside us and shipwreck our faith so when something happens in the church when you got hurt like legitimately hurt by someone in the church the devil wants to use that so you hate the church all together so you hate the body of Christ all together so you hate the assembly and you isolate yourself and when you isolate yourself this is where he has access to you churches have never been perfect but Jesus is busy perfecting his church look at this I'd say crazy stuff that happened in churches in the Bible James addresses classes uh, class distinctions, misunderstandings about faith, careless gossip. Galatians addresses issue of legalism. Colossians address heresy and that's all in a church. Car Corinth has claims of superiority over one another, using one another, abusing communion and sexual misbehavior. Revelation 1 church which is so unhealthy it makes Jesus want to vomit just think about that and guess what with all these imperfections with all these issues Jesus still loves his church church hurt can happen because of these three things and I'm sure there's more but I'm gonna mention three our own fault sins committed against us and failed leadership our own faults offended people get hurt everywhere John 6 6 6 and from that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more Jesus was teaching such a unbelievable things that people would would get offended and leave him they couldn't swallow eat my flesh and drink my blood they just could not understand it they they had this hard heart and so they walked away offended by him and that's not the only case when people walked away from Jesus being very offended our generation is so easily offended so easily hurt but every little inconvenient thing we walk away we became so cowardly that we don't resolve our offenses we don't face them it's just easier to tap out same thing happens in the families in marriages it's just easier to tap out rather than go and fix the issue go address it deal with your own heart some people in the church are evil and cause evil John 6 70 71 and Jesus answered to them did I not choose you the 12 and one of you is the devil is a devil he spoke of Judas Iscariot the son of Simon for it was he who would betray him being one of the 12. not every single person in the church has good intentions or like good intent 
but please don't <laughs> speculate about anybody okay most people are good people seeking the community but it happens and this is one of the reasons people can get really hurt in the church because some people could be evil people not all leaders are shepherds some are wolves John 10 12 it says but a hireling he who is not the shepherd one who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them not everyone has good intentions and the bible talks about that and don't be so naive church is not a gathering of all the good people church is a gathering of people and that's humans who have faults if church hurt involves misunderstanding then understanding will solve it if it involves intentional abuse staying away from that environment will help discern between the Judas and the Peter Bo both hurt Jesus Peter had a bad day Judas had a bad heart Peter you restore Judas you release there are people who will cause us hurt and we need to be discerning to understand did that person have super evil intent to hurt us we need to distance ourselves from those people abusers or the person just like hurt us they feel bad for it or they didn't even know they hurt us we need to restore that person talk about it go to that person don't let church storm shipwreck your faith first Timothy 1 18 19 it says this charge I commit to you son Timothy according to the prophecies previously made concerning you that by them you may wage the good warfare having faith and a good conscience some which some have rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck so those things they will actually also test your faith if something happened in the church and you got really hurt if that shipwrecks your faith altogether in Jesus something is wrong there and I just pray to the Lord that it will not shake your faith but make it even stronger because the hurt will happen if you find the perfect church there is no perfect church our church is not perfect either I think it is but it's really not okay everybody at some point will be offended or will be tempted to be offended please resolve that let's be mature let's not be cowards to tap tap out and just leave just like that okay <laughs> so don't get blindsided with the issues that you forget prophecies the promises the purpose that God has for you wage spiritual warfare instead of fighting people and that's a big one keep your faith in God even when you lost your faith in people healing may require for you to step away permanently from a specific church community but not returning to any faith community robs you in the long term so if you got really hurt or God forbid abused physically spiritually emotionally at the church it might be the best that you really find yourself a different church but I beg you please find it find a community of believers I'm gonna give you six practical steps on how to overcome the church and I'm gonna be wrapping up with this one number one go to God in prayer get God's perspective on your situation sometimes we're so caught up in our own offense or our feelings because they are legitimate if we are hurt we are hurt and those feelings they can blind us and please I beg you first of all go to the Lord and let him untangle your feelings so you can see clearly what's going on actually so you don't make hasty decisions number two deal with personal offense and sin it's easy to see the sin in others it's harder to deal with sin in ourselves and I encourage you not to only see the sin in yourself we are all sinners saved by grace we're being sanctified many times we understand that we are sinners we see our faults and we, we, we do but what are we gonna do about it right to deal with that 
this is where the step needs to be taken to actually deal with our own sin and not to be just simply offended person number three confront the offender we're better at talking talking about the person who hurt us than talking to them you know I had a situation one time with one person and that person is no longer in our church unfortunately I think I think I hurt that person unintentionally and the, the funny part is that I didn't even know about that and many people they don't even know they hurt you I want to challenge you not to be a coward but actually go to them and resolve the issue it takes boldness and courage to do so and like I already mentioned it's so easy to tap out it's it's so comfortable you know what nobody's gonna see me at all and and I think it's actually not fair because if person doesn't even know they hurt you deeply and you can't get over that offense it's your responsibility to go and resolve that issue with them at least talk to them address them maybe they'll be like oh my gosh I'm so sorry if I would have known and I knew that late, later on in life that I hurt that person with my words unintentionally I would have cried on the floor before that person please forgive me I did not mean it and this is how a lot of people they really don't mean it we just need to you know give it a shot give that person another chance you know to come clean and they will repent in most cases the situation will resolve amen number four confined confide in a faithful friend please don't fall for gossip if the issue is not resolved get someone else to help you navigate the situation number five forgive the person who hurts you don't harbor bitterness it will make things worse for you you are capable of hurting people too you know forgiveness is such a powerful thing we need to learn to forgive quickly not take years not take even months to release that forgiveness quickly I just pray that the Holy Spirit teaches us and gives us grace to forgive people quickly and when we are offended party even if it's a legitimate offense somebody somebody really hurt us we always need to keep in mind that we are capable of exactly the same thing doing exactly the same thing to other people we are not better just because we have not offended someone at that level we need to see that sin is sin and we we are just like everybody else we are capable of that number six last one if the person who caused the hurt doesn't repent and the church leadership didn't deal with the offender properly it might be wiser to find a different church and church is not a cartel or a mafia family that you can get out of it and you just can't go and find another church you know a lot of churches actually have that underlining tone if you leave our church you are in rebellion it's not like that Holy Spirit he's so kind he works with us as individuals and if something happened that cannot be resolved or you feel like this was not handled appropriately now and I'm talking about serious cases guys I'm not talking about small petty offenses I'm talking about serious cases which do happen in church if we don't learn to understand that we can go leave and separate and let that guilt not follow you please don't allow that God will bless you in another church God will prosper you in another house God will use you someone else as long as you release the forgiveness amen Ray Herbonke said a Christian believer needs a church just as a candle needs a candlestick a tree needs soil and an electric bulb light electric light bulb needs a socket without candlelight candlestick a candle cannot stand without soil a tree cannot grow without a socket an electric bulb cannot shine neither can you without fellowship Christian can neither stand nor grow nor shine this is so powerful and I find it a hundred percent true 
once you are not part of the assembly of the Lord of God the body of Christ you become this dysfunctional person and I'm talking about myself I've had my share of disappointments that I had to go through and deal with it's better to be in a community than hiding away by yourself it's more powerful you become this healthy grown child of God just like Sammy he's in our family we care for him we're gonna discipline him we're gonna grow him it's better for him like that than without a family same thing for you guys same thing for me it's better for us to be together and grow together iron sharpens iron people rub shoulders things happen we resolve it we become uh, less edgy right we become smoother and then the Lord can use us more easily and we can grow in a family of God. Amen.